Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this video, I wanted to quickly talk about wide color gamut monitors and an sRGB clamp. You're probably thinking, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm just going to go into that quickly now. I've actually got a wide gamut monitor. I, I bought one recently and I've encountered a problem. And I want to be able to help you guys out with that problem if you have a wide color gamut monitor. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, in the past, the normal color space that we'd view content on was the sRGB space. Now, this covers a section of, uh, you know, all possible colors that you can get on a display and has been quite limited. And in recent years, wide gamut monitors have become more prevalent in the display field, let's say. Creatives have used uh, a wider gamut for a while now, um, particularly those that are doing things like photo editing, um, maybe video editing for cinema, that kind of thing. And uh, But now it's starting to sort of come into mainstream, if you like. So a wide gamut monitor will cover more of the color space, um, the possible color space. Uh, you get different kinds of wide uh, gamut monitor um rec 20 uh, rec 2020 is one uh dci p3 is another and that's what we're going to be talking about today because i bought myself a 27 inch dell monitor that is a dci p3 screen it's also ips there's plenty of reasons why i bought this monitor because it seemed like a good all-rounder it basically had a wide color gamut it was about the right size. Its refresh rate had a maximum of 165 hertz. IPS screen, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the reasons that you look for in buying a display. So great. So what's the problem then? Well, my issue arises when it comes to a wide gamut display like this and a Windows machine. Let me explain. If you're using a color managed application, say like Photoshop or even Cinema 4D, actually, um, that's great because... In Cinema 4D, you can go to the preferences, go to uh, sort of where the display stuff is, um, and you can actually switch the color profile, which is usually set to sRGB 2.1 by default, and you can switch it over to your, your monitor's color profile. And um, all's fine. And the same thing with uh, Photoshop, that will detect your, your display's color gamut, and um, the advantage of this is that you can, say, edit images with a wider range of colors than you would be, than you could do if you were, if your display was um, only displaying RGB colors. Um, you've got a much larger range of colors to, uh, to deal with when you're looking at your display, which is, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, the problem arises with Windows. Windows itself, and I'm talking about the desk, uh, the desktop, and maybe other applications aren't color managed. And a problem that arises from this is if you're looking at uh, the Windows desktop, let's say, the color space that the desktop operates in is an sRGB space. And if you're looking at that in a on a wide gamut monitor, you will notice that the colors are way, way more vibrant particularly in the red end of the spectrum. And <clears throat> these colors, you know, some prefer this vibrant look, but um, these colors aren't accurate. They're actually blown out. They're too saturated. And the same for games as well. If you're running games in Windows and you're viewing them on a, a wide gamut display, the colors will look super, super saturated. And that's because what Windows is essentially doing is saying, oh, this is an RGB space, but your display is trying to display this RGB space in a DCI-P or a wider gamut space. So what it does is it maps the RGB space onto this wider gamut, and hence why you're getting these blown out colors. So what can we do about this? Well, most, well, I shouldn't say most, but some monitors that are wide gamut displays actually have a hardware option. So if you click the the button on the back of your monitor and go into the menu, they will have something called RGB mode or an sRGB mode or an sRGB clamp. And uh, once you turn that off, what it does is 
uh, sorry, once you turn that on, what that will do is actually clamp that wider gamut color space down to a down to an sRGB range. For those that have monitors with this option on it, that's great. But what about monitors that don't have this option on it? Now, this is something I encountered recently because the Dell that I bought, the 27 inch Dell that I bought, doesn't have a clamp. It doesn't have an sRGB clamp on it. So I was actually tearing my hair out for a couple of days going, oh, this is annoying, you know, because I want my display to work in all environments. And uh, when working in window, particularly when you've got more than one screen. So my main monitor is this wide gamut display that I bought. I've got a monitor to my left and a monitor to my right and there in the sRGB space. And when you look at the Windows desktop, you'll notice that the middle monitor looks far more vibrant. Even after calibration, it will look far more vibrant because it's taking this sRGB space and applying it to a DC, DCI-P3 screen. So what can we do about this? Well, if you are using an AMD card, you can actually do it at a driver level. If you go into the AMD driver or whatever their software is, you'll have an option for a custom color, color that you want to turn on, and then there'll be a color temperature control that you want to turn off. And this effectively clamps the sRGB range down uh, for wide gamut displays. What about NVIDIA um, cards? And this is where I should imagine that most of us are de uh, exist, because um, particularly my viewers, because most GPU renderers require CUDA cores, which means that you've probably got an NVIDIA card. Has NVIDIA got this option in their driver software or their control panel? No. So I was pretty, um, I was pretty upset about that. So when I found out that there wasn't a lot I could do about it, I was really, really gutted. But after some digging, I found that uh, Clever Clogs online had actually uh, realized that this option is actually available to NVIDIA cards, but it's just not exposed in the, in the drive. It's, yeah, it's not exposed in the software. So we wrote a little program. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you quick. Here we go. So I'll be putting a link to this in the description of this video. Uh, he's made something called No Video SRGB. And it basically, you know, it says this tool uses an undocumented NVIDIA API supported on Fermi and later to convert colors before sending them to a wide gamut monitor to effectively clamp uh, it to sRGB. Now this is brilliant because even if your screen does not have an sRGB clamp option on it, you can use this to uh, to clamp the colors down. So that means that in Cinema 4D, if you've got it set to sRGB mode, which is its default mode, that's great. It will just work as normal. But it also means that Windows, the Windows environment, and also the uh, any game environment will also look correct as well. Now, this is where uh, I think... Microsoft are lagging way behind. Uh, I think Macs are color managed. Um, Apple Apple machines are color managed, and it baffles me as to why the why a Windows environment isn't. Now Windows Eleven came out uh, a week ago, I think, and even Windows Eleven isn't color managed. So they really need to sort their lives out and. Uh, and get up to speed, especially now that these kind of monitors are becoming more and more popular and more prevalent in the screen space. So anyway, all you need to do is go here, go to the releases. So over here on the right, click on that. And then you'll see so you've got a bunch of releases here. I'd recommend getting the latest one. And then all you need to do is unzip the folder that it comes in and then put it wherever you want. There'll be an executable there that you'll be able to click. So let's close this down and let me go grab the executable that I've got open already. And you'll see something like this. Now, all three of my screens are here. So my central screen, which is on what I'm looking at now, is uh, the Dell 2721 DGF, the one that is a wide gamut monitor that has no sRGB clamp. And then I've got one to the right. It's another Dell, but it's, it's an older one, so it's, it's an RGB screen. And I've got a Samsung television to my... Um, to my left here, um, and that's also sRGB. Um, so as you can see, I've just got the tick box here for my 
new Adele, and now it's clamped to the sRGB space. Now, if I turn this off, you're probably not going to see a difference because I think my recording software actually manages color. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I don't think you'll see a difference. But trust me, on my end, when I'm looking at the screen, I can see a massive difference in these reds here. So. Really, I just wanted to let you guys know about this because if you've got a wide color gamut screen, which is very, very likely nowadays because that's what's coming out, especially especially with the high refresh rates IPS screens, and you're seeing that your Windows environment looks awful, particularly across multiple monitors, this is your answer if you're on an NVIDIA GPU. And uh, like I said, the AMD GPUs uh, have this option kind of built into their drivers. Uh, like I said, I'll leave a link to this in the description. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to visit me at digitalmeet.uk where you can vote for upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.